Today, let's take a look at another Audi E8 A39 from a local S4 that came to our shop for West Lead conversion. Currently, this is the stock block with the original liner um, sunk by a little bit, probably no less than 2,000, like 0 0.05 millimeter. All six of them, you can feel by fingernail. Clearly, they are not flush with the deck surface. Again, this is the most common issue out of EA839. Does it cause a problem? Maybe not for normal use, but for high horsepower output, there's a risk. <clears throat> because if you take a look closely, the head gasket print left by the head gasket, you can see the the ceiling structure of the head gasket sits half on the liner and half on the aluminum. But unfortunately, half of it sank a little bit. So this only tiny one millimeter width is that's all available for this cylinder ceiling. It comes back to the root problem that Audi did not put a flange sleeve in. Audi did a good job of putting a sleeve in, but unfortunately they didn't go all the way as all the uh, aftermarket performance shop. They didn't put a flange sleeve that sits on the deck surface. Instead, they chose to mill a latch at the bottom and then they stick a flangeless sleeve inside. And they didn't put Loctite or any other uh, the adhesive inside. But probably that doesn't matter because the nature of these flangeless sleeves in the aluminum block, especially during high horsepower application is, they tend to sink a little bit because of the different thermal expansion rate of the liner and the block. And unfortunately, the, the flush surface is at the ledge, at, at the bottom. So the, the deck surface of the, uh, the original liner tend to move up and down a little bit and given time, they produce this result. Um, I don't see a better solution than putting a dry flange sleeve and or a wet liner. In this case, the customer chose a wet liner uh, for, for a cooling effect. Also, because of the uh, distance between the two cylinders, this area tend to overheat and Audi put a hole inside for cooling coolant to pass. But um, because of this channel, dry flange sleeve tend to have a weak support here and whether or how much horsepower at what performance would the dry flange sleeve sink, um, that's debatable. So to mitigate this risk, this customer chose to have wet liner inside because the whole point of wet liner is the top 30 to 50 millimeter of this most heated area has been swapped out from aluminum to uh, ductile iron. So eliminates the root cause, which is the soft aluminum that tends to sink at high horsepower at overheat. Um, that's why wet liners are used. Not because of the strength. Dry flange sleeve is strong enough, but this area tend to overheat and at what horsepower does the aluminum soften enough to sink a little bit? Um, we don't know yet, so that's why they chose to do this way. Now if we look again, the first cylinder liner came out with a boring bar because it has uneven thickness across the entire surface. Does that mean Audi put in the sleeve offset, skewed? Well, if we say it's our setup problem, what about the second one? The second one, this after second board, it remains rather you know, even thickness. We're gonna chisel it out, but guess what? It, it didn't come out with the boring bar. Now we're gonna move to the third one. Now, let's see if the third cylinder liner will come out of the bore with the boring bar. Well, apparently not. 
It stays in place. We're gonna chisel them out. This one is very even around the cross. Apparently Audi didn't put this one in with any offset. This looks pretty good. So what happened to this first hole? I don't know. The third one came out okay, but we can see the thickness is a little uneven. So here's my theory. When Audi makes these engines, especially in the rough machining stage, they'll make sure these aluminum bores are straight, but they never bother to put the block on any CNC machine that is located based on the crank journal. Not to mention tighten all the bolts. At that particular stage of the manufacturing, probably this journal has, hasn't been a line hole or line board yet. So they probably use some bad play to fix it on a rotary bed. And what, that, what happens is these aluminum boards are, again, bored very round. I don't see any roundness issue, but their center is offset. If you think about it, it's a 90 degree v, V6 engine, 90 degree, this is not a 60 degree V6. You put a bad plate and you put some locating pin on the bad plate to fix the block. How precise can you be? Well, what, what can Audi do, right? This, this journal probably at that stage hasn't been made yet. So, of course, the apparent aluminum bore is not centered around the crank journal. When we machine is based on the crank journal, which is the correct way to do it during precision manufacturing, then you notice these apparent boards are offset. This also happens to Toyota and other V-shaped engines. We can immediately see which engine has been made precisely from the factory. For example, the Porsche 4.8 Cayenne engine. That particular engine, you can see every board is very precisely located based on the crank journal. I don't know what Porsche did. I don't know what kind of fixture they use or how much they pay the engineers, but they are precise. Audi, Mercedes, Toyota, BMW, I can tell they are not machined based on crank journal. They are machined based on a fixture that a bad plate that rotates. Well, this is beyond just using torque plate on the final machining. This is the actual whole location issue. EA839, the last bore has been trimmed in the boring operation to prepare for west lead conversion. Today, let's take a look at the final boring ops for this Audi EA839 before it hits the honing machine. In this ops, the wet sleeves are in, the copper O-rings are in, the torque plates are bolted onto the spec. We measured a 0.025 millimeter distortion before and after the torque plate, saying this EA839 is pretty rigid as is. So we're gonna continue this and then we'll hit honing machine. Thanks for watching.